York right now. Hello, I'm Felicia Lawrence. And I'm John Hanson. Chicago's new home for the CW is finally here. CW 26, the place for you to catch the best and hottest TV shows this fall. CW 26 Chicago is where you'll get all things entertainment. We're talking action, drama, court, and comedy. That includes fresh episodes of the CW's action-filled series like Arrow and Riverdale and the debuts of Nancy Drew and Batwoman. Plus, CW 26 has two exciting new shows, Judge Jerry and the Tamron Hall Show. Absolutely cannot wait for this. Yes, let's begin with Batwoman, the latest entry in the CW's Arrowverse. Orange is the new black star Ruby Rose plays television's first openly lesbian superhero. The show focuses on Bruce Wayne's cousin Kate Kane, who takes over as the caped crusader when Batman disappears. Here's your first look at Batwoman. Crows represent order, security, safety. Batman gave up on us. The bat's not coming back. Something's up. Eyes everywhere. Hello, said Alice. Shall we believe the crows will protect us? <laughs> Agent Moore, do you copy? Do you copy? Sophie's missing. I thought you should know. Hey, Dad. We're gonna find her. Then let me help. Bad idea. Where'd you get this? What happened to staying out of it? Is there something you'd like to report to your squad? I'm gonna take you down. I ran in with that proper backup. I do not want her getting in the way. Curiouser and curiouser. What do you want? I need you to send your father a message. You're all I have left, Kate. And I don't want to lose you, too. Wayne Security. You owe my boss a new door. Your boss is my cousin. You, you, you don't want to go near that. You were, you were seriously not supposed to know what's down there. So I have this thing with rolls? I need you to fix his suit. The suit is literal perfection. It will be. When it fits a woman. <laughs> Female Bruce Wayne. Awesome. Hilarious. Handsome. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. has it all girl power wild stunts and complex relationships we caught up with the cast on the cw's red carpet to learn more about what we can expect this season i need you to fix his suit the suit is literal perfection it will be when it fits a woman an exciting exciting time for you that woman finally Unleashed. It's happening. It's happening. I mean, I just, I don't even think about any of that. I just think about my job every time I go to work. Think about what it means to me. Think about what Kate's going through, what Batwoman's going through. Turn up to set and, and act and play and have fun. Hey, 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 hey. We get to see fully fledged characters interacting with their superheroes. Mm -hmm. You know, Batwoman being my superhero, getting to interact with her in a real way, getting to help her out, getting starstruck and all of those things. Wayne Security, 
You owe my boss a new door. Your boss is my cousin. And what about your characters is most different from you yourselves as a person? I'd say Luke Fox is kind of neurotic. Like, he, he he's very nervous and very protective, and I'm a little more chill, you know what I'm saying? What's it been like preparing to play this role? It's really tough, and the stunts are really wild, and it's different kinds of fighting than what I'm used to. I was just exhausted. I was like, what happened to this? The, I thought I was better than this. I'm playing Jacob Kane, who runs Gotham City. He's a complex character, and then he sends his daughter away because he wants to protect her. She ends up coming back, and she becomes Batwoman. I need you to send your father a message. You're a villain. How'd you tap into the villain role, then, if you're, you're such a nice person in real life? My mom actually always tells me, she's like, you play the redeemable, and I don't know if I can say the B word on TV, <laughs> really well. We can't wait to have you in Chicago. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. What do you think about the city? It serves as Gotham in such a cool, unique way. You know, the skyline and the water, and the, it's just, it's an awesome city. All right, you may recognize a few Chicago landmarks in Batwoman. That's because Chicago, once again, the backdrop for Gotham City. Mm -hmm. Batwoman's executive producer, Caroline Dry, sat down with Brandon Pope to explain why Chicago is the perfect city for the series. When we started developing Batwoman, we thought, how do we elevate this show as the next level of Arrowverse show? And there are so many Arrowverse shows that we just needed to find an aesthetic difference. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so I obviously grew up with Chicago in my backyard, and I just love the rivers. I love that even though um, it's not an island, it can kind of feel like it's on, you're on an, an island, and Gotham is an island, you know, several islands. So it was important for me just to really make the show visually stand out. The Chicago Board of Trade is positioned in a really unique way on those streets. There's this director named Christopher Nolan, and he took his stab at the Batman movies, and he used that as Wayne Tower, and we thought, you know, that would be, it wasn't a bad idea. Maybe we should do the same thing. But I think, you know, being there and being boots on the ground, standing in front of that building, I think I saw what he saw, which is there's so much scope looking down LaSalle. Those streets, the buildings are so... They're old and they all have character and charm and it, the street just kind of goes down forever. What's really unique to the city is that when you're standing at these high vantage points, which Batwoman does a lot because she's Batwoman and she's looking down at her city, the city is imposing and really impressive because the buildings are so tall, but the way that it's been, the buildings are spaced out around the city, there's a breadth to it that the buildings don't feel like they're on top of you. So you get so much scope from these high vantage points. And you'll, over here, it'll be Art Deco, and over here, it's modern, and over here, it's something else. So you're just, it, the care, like, the buildings, like the city, have so much diversity to them. Batwoman premieres Sunday, October 6th at 7 p.m. on CW26. All right, still ahead, we sit down with the stars of Nancy Drew to learn about the CW's spooky new series. Plus, the Pierce family is back for a second season of Black Lightning, and we've got your sneak peek. And to get more interviews with stars and behind-the-scenes action, follow us on social at CW26Chicago. The CW26 Fall Preview Special is brought to you in part by A River Through History, Credit One Bank, and Finishing Chicago Contractors. Discover the stories like the people who tell them aren't always what they seem. Bad Woman, coming this fall to CW26. Chicago's new home for the CW is CW26. Awesome. You can find CW26 over the air on Channel 26 and these cable and satellite providers. Don't miss the action, the drama, court. I love it. Comedies. I think you might have something here. And brand new shows. CW26. Check us out online for more info and follow us on social media at CW26 Chicago. You're watching the CW26 Fall Preview Special. I'm John Hansen. The Arrowverse began with the debut of Arrow in 2012. This fall, the series' eighth and final season will premiere on CW26. Stars Stephen Amell and David Ramsey reflect on the show's success and the future of the Arrowverse. You can't save the city alone. 
We're going to do this the team arrow way. When it's time to say goodbye, say goodbye. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that what the monitor has uh, prophesized is is going to come true. Mm -hmm. But it's it's important when I'm when I'm done with the show. I actually feel like it's in the best service of not just the show, but the Arrowverse, so to speak, to actually really be done. Flash is going to keep going, and Supergirl's going to keep going, and I just hope that they look back at, at what I hope is, you know, a decade or 12 years or 15 years, and I don't know, I just hope they had a good time watching our shows. No closer to being saved than where we started. This is an emotional time for you yeah. when you when you process that. This show really started this superhero boom. I grew up, man, when uh, you know they would have these these shows where sometimes when they crossed over, it was a big deal, right? Like Six Million Dollar Man and Bionic Woman, and it was always a big deal on television. So now to kind of be a part of this show where you have like a five show, six show crossover. It's just kind of unheard of, right? What do you make of the legacy of Arrow and what it's done for, for TV and superheroes? First, I'm, I'm real grateful. I mean, but nobody saw this coming, man. We were doing this in 2012. Nobody could have possibly thought this would happen. Arrow premieres Tuesday, October 15th at 8 p.m. on CW26. America's favorite teenage sleuth, Nancy Drew, makes her television debut as a fierce, street-smart teen. The CW's version of the classic novel reinvents the iconic heroine in a darker and sexier tone. Grab the popcorn because the trailer is going to have you sitting on the edge of your seat. Dead Lucy. Horseshoe Bay's most infamous sea queen wore her crown for only one night. People say she still haunts our town. But I don't believe in ghosts. I believe in looking for the truth. Drew, clam chowder, table eight. Mysteries are everywhere, and I love solving them. But then life dropped a real mystery into my lap. So what do you five have to say? I'm looking at town screw up, ex-con, city girl, and Nancy Drew. Why does he say your name like that? She used to complicate my job. You mean do it for you? A social light killed on parade night. We have to solve this case fast. In a case like this, you have to look to the husband. You think that guy killed his wife and you break into his house? What were you doing there, following me? Please help me. Please, no. Tiffany Hudson, murdered by a ghost. Not just any ghost, dead Lucy. Definitely her. Except definitely not. She's never had a murder pinned on her. Unlike us. I can't believe I missed the signs. The truth is, we all have secrets. Everyone is a suspect. I have so many questions. Prove her innocence is gonna end up making her guilty. gives you chills. The stars of Nancy Drew, Kennedy McMahon, and Scott Wolf shared their thoughts on just how spooky things will get in Horseshoe Bay, Maine. The Drew Crew.
Hey, yeah. hey, I saw the hashtag and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really cool. Beyond the pilot, how has this show evolved, this Nancy Drew show? I think it's getting more and more spooky. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, you know, a lot of relationship dynamics are mm -hmm. shifting and evolving and changing for better and for worse. I've been a fan of these mysteries my whole life in books and in films and yeah. shows and... So to be sitting in the middle of, in the middle of one is is pretty fun. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool. and you mentioned it being spooky. How spooky is this? Is it is it that scary? At its spookiest, it's a eleven. Quite spooky. It's, yeah. No. 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 <laughs> I, I. At its spookiest, I would say it's a six. Hmm. You're, you know, yes, with, with current sensibilities. I mean, there's some really spooky stuff. And it's always just for a second. How does this differ from the books? People that, you know, grew up reading Nancy Drew, are they still going to find something in this show that they can connect with? For sure. I mean, Nancy, in a lot of ways, is the same Nancy that has always existed. The types of mysteries we're doing, the, the puzzle solving, mm. the investigation, all of that stuff is very, there are pulling a lot of inspiration from the original mysteries. Yeah, and there was, some, there was always something in the books that was like, even if they were just like having breakfast, like there was something afoot, right? Mm -hmm. It was just like in the air. And I think that this show really captures that, is most interested in that thing. Yeah. Interesting. So something afoot. Actually, <laughs> something's drewing. I, I've just. <gasps> something's yeah. drewing. I Whoa. think I copyrighted that. Do either of you believe in ghosts? I think there's stuff going on that we can't see and touch. And I've never tried to really define it. Um, but this this show uh, toils around in that space a bit. Yeah. Well, how about that? In a just spooky enough way. Not yep. too spooky. Just spooky enough. Nancy Drew premieres Wednesday, October 9th at 8 p.m. on CW26. It's been 14 years since Supernatural first exploded onto our screens. And just ahead, we're going to hear from Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles about how they plan to conquer life after the show. Plus, TV queen Tamron Hall makes her return to television on CW26. We'll share the details after the break. Six. Serious power envy right now. Let's just all act normal. You have no idea what they are capable of. This must be foul. You Carringtons know how to throw a party. A toast to me. Did you do any research on this family that you're about to get in the bed with? Whoever they are, they couldn't be crazier than mine. Wake up, Carrington. You got played by your wife and now you're... There's a look at some of the shows that have been rebooted for a new generation. Charmed is back for its second season, premiering Friday, October 11th at 7 p.m. It's followed by Dynasty at 8, both on CW26. Now, it's so hard to say goodbye, but the stars of Supernatural say fans won't be disappointed with how this iconic series ends after 14 years. You guys have had people hooked. Yeah. How does that feel to have that fan base there and have that loyal fan base and people be emotionally attached to what you guys deliver? I mean, that's the fuel. You know, that's that's what drives us. That's that's really what um, what gives us the opportunity to take the chances that we do, uh, to write the way that we write, to act the way that we act. You don't necessarily do it trying to get 100 million viewers or whatever it is, but you do it hoping to make an impact, whether you have 10 viewers or 10 million viewers. And so the thing I love best about our fandom and our SPN family is that they, they care about the show. They care about the characters. How have uh, new characters like the Archangel Michael impacted the show? I mean, it just makes it big. Like, it's just, you know, people are like, where's it going to go the last season? And it's like, where haven't we gone? You know, we've gotten so big. We've gone to heaven. We've gone to hell. We've gone to alternate universes. We've brought in characters from alternate universe. Like, it's just, and I think that's one of the great things about a show. I'm the new kid on a show. I came in in season four and uh, as a guest star, and I walked into set and felt immediately welcomed. And I, it's a really warm, congenial, environment where everyone laughs and has a lot of fun. It's bittersweet. I'm, I'm proud to do the show justice. I, God forbid the show got to a place where 
you know, the fandom fell away and the show got bad or, you know, we, we weren't excited about it anymore. So uh, they say leave them wanting more. And I feel like I feel like I'm going to leave wanting more myself. What do you look forward to the most? What can we expect in season 15? I've never written anything for this show. And I wrote a little something. Oh. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that <laughs> that maybe I get to, because I have this idea, I have this idea, and I'm hoping maybe I get that idea worked into the show a little bit. So, thank oh, you. that's a tease. Yeah. Yeah. Triple double no assist. You got, you got some LeBron in you. Okay, yeah, okay, all right, all right. I like it. I like it. It feels like we're telling a more important story. You know, it's based on these characters and it's science fiction, but we get to kind of uh, do an interesting take on a lot of things that are actually going on in real life. Supernatural premieres Thursday, October 10th at 7 p.m. on CW26. After the break, the cast of All American reveals the game plan for its sophomore season. And all rise, court is in session <laughs> with the Honorable Judge Jerry Springer. He joins us in studio to talk about his all new show just ahead. The CW26 Fall Preview Special is brought to you in part by A River Through History, Credit One Bank, and Finishing Chicago Contractors. Some say it takes a real hero to fit in on the CW. That's why I'm excited to present to you Steve Wilkos, man. Uh, that's just your name with man added to it. Watch Steve Wilkos on CW26. Who made that logo? I made it in Microsoft Paint. What's wrong with it? The first person to start the jury chant will be held in contempt of court. Either that or I'll send Wilkos after you. Judge Jerry coming this fall to CW26. You're watching the CW26 Fall Preview Special. I'm Felicia Lawrence. And I'm John Hanson. Pick up your playbooks, grab your pom-poms. It's time to head back to South L.A. for Season 2 of All-American. All-American ended its freshman run with a big championship for Beverly High and a couple major cliffhangers, too. The stars discussed the impact of Season 1 and the game plan for Season 2. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you, you come out with a show like this, you don't know how it's going to be received. Uh, Netflix got a hold of it and kind of spread the spread the word, and uh, and then it just uh, caught on like wildfire. Why do you feel like it's caught on with people? And I think it just has to do with where we are, just uh, as a society, and what uh, what people what people need. I think we're unfortunately and fortunately we're still at a place where people are excited to see people on TV that look like them. Representation matters. It's just based on a lot of the messages I got. Is like for a lot of people, this is the first time they feel like they're being. See people out there, they're recognizing themselves uh, in these stories and and and, uh, and on the screen, and it's and it's it's meaning something to them. Football is like the backdrop, and it's an incredible backdrop. But you know, for me, it's a it's a story about identity. Every one of these characters is in their own unique identity crisis. So we're able to experience, you know, a different type of personality with Coop. I mean, she's loving, she's fun, she ain't scared. You know what I mean? She got a little toughness to her, you know, but she's still just a girl, you know, and I love that we're able to still see that. We, we, we left it some big cliffhangers for, for every one of these characters. What can we look forward to in season two? We dug deep in season one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's so much more to go, and um, I don't know, man. I, I can't say too much. We're leaning into some important issues and important topics, and uh, I think we're going to go a lot deeper this season, and I'm excited to uh, keep telling the story. But make sure y'all tune in this fall. Mondays, All-American. So, John, the Warner Brothers lot is one of the busiest working studios in Hollywood, and it's also the home of All-American. And one of the show's stars, Samantha Logan, gave CW26 an exclusive set tour, so check it out. Um, I heard there was a pool party over here. No, man, I think you've got the wrong address, the but I'm wrong here. wrong address. Actually, psych. We're on the set of All American getting a behind the scenes look at the set here in Burbank, California. Samantha Logan, she plays Olivia Baker, hanging out with me and giving us the behind the scenes exclusive tour. How you feeling? I feel great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this right here looks like we're in the Casa de Baker, the pool area, but right. in reality, uh, 
Kinda. That's not LA. It's a nice rough idea of what it wants to be, but no, I mean, look at this set deck. Like, they do such an amazing job. Like, it feels really real. The attention to authenticity yeah. is beautiful. You could throw a real pool party here. I want to throw a real pool party here. I think that would not go over well, but uh, I'm gonna No, try. because the pool, uh, from what I'm observing, <laughs> could oh, be that yeah. deep, is it? Can oh, you, can yeah. I mean, I would say put your foot in it. Uh, let's see. Mm. It goes up to my wrist. <laughs> That's about what, two feet? Oh, yeah. Everyone behind the scenes just makes it look amazing. Our DP and Keel is so awesome. So it all looks really real. And it really does. And there's yeah. so many lights. I mean, lots of lights. Oh, my God. Including this giant one here. I mean, you're glowing. Dude. I will never you look say great. no. Thank you so much. Yeah. You look great. Oh, thank you. I will never say no to good lighting, okay? Oh, yeah, I mean, me neither. So I'm imagining this curtain goes up. This curtain goes up. All those lights go on behind. So there's like a certain, like, they're like, I think little dots, I would assume. And then once the light shines through, if it's a nighttime look, mm -hmm. then the whole, that whole thing is glowing and looks like the city at night. Does okay. this actually work? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> no, but they can make it look like it can work. Okay. Movie magic, man. That's yeah, right. That's right. Just, we'll I mean, it looks real, too. You know what I yeah, mean? Actually, like, it looks like someone's been using it. This is really cool. <laughs> we have family photos. Is, it, is that you? This is me. This is when I was a baby. Little Sam. <laughs> Look at her. This is truly a family home. We took these pictures too, like one of our first days. Oh, these are real. These are real, real photos. Uh, yeah, little photos. <laughs> Don't zoom in too much. Just yeah. kind of keep a yeah. healthy distance. You what got this Mama one? and Dad. That might be photoshopped a little bit. Um, it's a little. I don't think these are their real bodies, but. <laughs> I don't know if I'm revealing There's no way to really know that when you're, it's TV magic. <laughs> if anybody recognizes this, this was where the family scene took place during Spencer's birthday party. That's right. When Grandpa Willie when came grandpa over. When Grandpa came in like, and there was all that drama and y'all had to whisper. And, yeah. and just imagine two big cameras right here and the right. four of us like all squished in here. This was oh honestly gosh. one of the most fun scenes that I've ever filmed. And it, and it honestly, it turned out great. Like I'm really happy. But all that drama took place in here. Wow. Yeah. It was fun because of the claustrophobic. Is that why it was fun? Yes. It made the stakes higher. <laughs> Always. You felt the pressure. I felt the pressure. Oh, yeah, literally, we were like this. Filming. And then they had, like, the director, um, like, literally, she had us, like, lean back for some shots, and then there's nowhere to go. It was just all very tight. Where are the neighbors? You got neighbors out here? Um, yeah, we got Joe. Joe's next door. Right, Sometimes so if where, you call, that's it. Yo, Joe! Joe? I think he's uh, sleeping right now. <laughs> this is literally our neighborhood. I love it. This is our local neighborhood. Guys, this is true. You're getting a real, like, peek getting, behind the veil here. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then so. you've got all the lights and stuff. This is a classroom, if you'd like to just <laughs> right over there. Oh, well, that's kind of nerve-wracking being that close to school, I'm sure. Actually, I, I don't know. I like filming in classrooms. Really? Yeah, I think it's really fun because I'm not actually there learning. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I get to be in there and not do anything. Yeah. Pretend like I'm learning. That's kind of what I did in school anyway. Let's actually check out school, yes. shall we? <gasps> yes! Yes! This is actually one of my favorite sets. A lot of fun dialogue has taken place in these hallways. And, I mean, they did, again, such a beautiful job. You play a high school, right? Yes. Does it ever bring back memories for you of being in high school when you're shooting high school scenes? Yeah, but this is a much nicer high school. Like, oh, this yeah. is like the Taj Mahal of high schools. Like, look at these clean lockers. You know what I mean? Uh, like, very offensive. People opening lockers, the camera's on this side. And this is actually Layla's locker. Hmm. I think it kind of reflects her character. Uh, 100%. Too. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then my locker's just like, I think it's like next to it. Yeah, this is my locker. It says a lot about Olivia. You've done so much with the place. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on season two. October 7th, All American. And now we got a little peek behind the curtain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All American returns Monday, October 7th at 7 p.m. on CW26. All right, let's bolt into Freeland. Black Lightning left a lot of questions unanswered at the end of last season. So the cast gives us a few hints and a few hopes for what fans can expect in season three. Black Lightning and Thunder will always fight for justice. I'm really honored and proud to be back for my third year in the row, mm -hmm. um, celebrating another season, preparing for another season. I just uh, had an opportunity to visit the writers' room last week before coming here, and um, and I tried to squeeze something out of them. 
Uh, it didn't work. It didn't work? What's the suit feel like? Heavy. Heavy. Hot. Hot. <laughs> the first time I put it on, I cried. Um, but I always, I get it, my mind starts playing tricks on me, and I start thinking that I'm really, you know, got all these powers in my real life. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it, it, I guess it worked. Our guy, Tobias, he ended up in a pit, man, a purgatory. And I know that, you know, there's a lot of people in Freeland that want him to stay there. Tobias, Khalil, Sinai, they're going to keep coming. Check it. We decide every day to be Jefferson Pierce or Tobias Well. Mm. We decide. We make that decision every day. So, you know, I, I love, you know, I'm a, a contrast to that guy, you know, and, and, and I love to be able to play that and explore those different parts of myself. No more words. Time to die. So what are you hoping for? for season? I am hoping to team up with my family. Now that my sister has, has come to grips with her powers Finally. and she's got her costume. Yeah, I've been trying to get her to do it for two years, right? <laughs> so now that she's where she is and she's comfortable with it, she's got her costume, I'm really looking forward to all three of us teaming up together. It's a very also authentically black show. Oh, yeah. This is a black and Unapologetically. Black show. Our main priority is to make sure that we are being authentically ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I believe because of that, that's why it's connected. <laughs> Black Lightning returns Monday, October 7th at 8 p.m. on CW26. He's back after the break. We're chatting with the Honorable Judge Jerry Springer about his new show. Plus, Tamron Hall is coming to CW26. We've got all the details about her return to daytime television. And to learn more about the shows and get behind-the-scenes content, check out at CW26 Chicago on social and our brand-new website, CW26Chicago.com. I'm feeling so cool. Together. Together. We're all for it. All for it. Lately I've been feeling so cool. All for acceptance. Joining forces. Being an ally. All for we. All for us. All for together. The CW. Dare to defy together. Stress. Oh, I'm stressed. Don't stress. Watch Seinfeld weeknights at 10 and 10.30 on Chicago's new home for the CW, CW26. My home, Elaine. The show about nothing, nothing is going nowhere. Get out of here. No, Seinfeld's staying on CW26. All right, let's just stay calm here. Don't get all crazy on me. Weeknights at 10 and 10.30 on Chicago's new home for the CW, CW26. Chicago's new home for the CW. CW26 can be found over the air on Channel 26, plus these cable and satellite providers. <laughs> the man's not a cheater, he's a freak. Are you on dope right now? You're in the wrong place with the wrong judge. I want to say I'm so happy and this close to you. Man, come on, man, get this hug. <laughs> this is a lot of drama. I said, now come back and talk to me when you got Dana. Who's Dana? Dana is DNA. Y'all gonna talk over one another, but you ain't gonna talk over me. One text and you're in jail. One call, another you're in jail. This girl is crazy. I know, though. I'm not boo-boo the fool. I know when a female is trying to talk to my fiance. It smells <laughs> like bad ribs cooking. And you didn't bring a rib up okay. in here. Yeah. Think this is a joke? Miss. Try that again. Your Honor. That's way better. He don't speak English correctly. He don't speak English correctly? He doesn't speak English. <laughs> Get out of my courtroom right now. Well, all your favorite court shows from People's Court to Judge Mathis will air this fall weekdays on CW26. Well, uh, listen, he's not letting me I explain. Me. I don't care. You Excuse don't me. threaten you people called in this courtroom. Me and said that I, I called you. So I called you. Get out of this court right now. Oh, baby. Oh, my Ooh. goodness. Well, court is now in session. <laughs> Come this fall, Jerry Springer is returning to daytime television, but this time we'll be calling him Judge Jerry. And here are all the details. Jerry Springer, so Jerry, how you doing, please. Judge? Don't get up, please. <laughs> Although when I walk into the uh, courtroom, uh, you know, the bailiff always says, all rise. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. 
But I, I'm excited about it. I mean, that clip you just saw, that's about the only time I've ever really mm -hmm. kind of lost it because the guy was totally... <laughs> I don't believe that, Yeah, yeah we'll have to wait and oh, see, no, of course. No, no, but it's more, it's a, uh, it's a warmer. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I try to treat everyone as if they were my child or grandchild, mm -hmm. you know, and, okay. and, and kind of rather than... Yeah. It's a much calmer show. The reason they put me on the bench is because you can't throw a bench. They were worried... <laughs> With chairs, it would uh -huh. just be chaos the whole time. Jerry, i got to ask, what's it like being called the Honorable Judge Jerry? Because, I mean, uh, I imagine a lot of people know this about you, but maybe not everyone. You have a law degree from Northwestern, right? Yeah, I graduated here in uh, 68, so it, 50 years ago. So 50 years after graduating <laughs> law school, I'm finally a judge. <laughs> this is the first time in my life that the words Jerry Springer and Honorable will be in the same sentence. <laughs> That's never, that, you know, that never happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so going into this show, how have you been just in terms of production and being hands-on or just what's your approach to this show well, versus we the Jerry Springer show? We tape 30 or 35 cases a week. Oh, wow. But we tape them every other week mm -hmm. because the off week is when I have to study the cases because these people are from all over the country, so I have to know the law in their particular state as it applies to the situation. So I really have to study. I mean, it's it's the first grown-up job I've had in 30 <laughs> right. years. You know? we, we saw that that harsh judgment kick well, us that, out of the car, but That you... really was a... Right. That, it doesn't happen. Well, uh, all I've been seeing, that there seems to be a lot of heart in the show. I mean, like you were saying, you treat people fairly, you want to get to it, you want to find the moral judgment and then find the laws that fit around that, right? Yeah, that's exactly the formula that, that I'm comfortable with. What is the morally right thing to do? And then you try to find laws that support it. Sometimes the laws aren't there to support it. So you feel bad about the decision you have to make, but that's what the law is. But if I can find a a law that supports the moral decision, uh, you know, I'll do that. Could Judge, I got to say, you've had an incredible career. I mean, we've gone from this TV host and now Judge Jerry. What's next? I'd like to be king. <laughs> uh, I was born in England. I mean, in uh, fact, I left when I found out I couldn't be king. That's all I that's, really that's all that's left. Yeah. President, yeah, exactly. king, that's all that's left. Well, I like it's, well obviously, anybody <laughs> could be president. It started as Ooh, Joel. Don't say yeah, I don't that. mean to wrap it there. That's the judge has spoken. He has yeah. dropped his gavel on that one. There we go. Jerry, thank you so much, of course. And you can watch Judge Jerry this fall. The show premieres September 9th on Chicago's new home for the CW, CW26. Weekday mornings at 9 and 9.30. Grab a pen and mark your calendars. Tamron Hall is returning to daytime television. After the break, we chat with the TV queen about coming back to Chicago and what we can expect from our new talk show. Curiouser and curiouser. Curiouser and curiouser. And curious, sir. And curious, sir. Bad Woman, coming this fall to CW 26. 6732 Long. Chicago's new home for the CW is CW 26. Awesome. Don't miss the action, the drama, court. I love it. Comedies. I think you may have something here. And brand new shows. Plus, it's not Chicago TV without the U. And you can find the U on these channels with familiar faces and fresh new shows. Check us out online for more info. Watch Two Broke Girls weeknights at 9 and 9.30. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Two Broke Girls weeknights at 9 and 9.30 on Chicago's new home for the CW, CW26. In five, four, three. We all have a story to tell, so let's talk about it. Starting September 9th on CW26. Cameron Hall is making her much-anticipated return to daytime television on CW26 with her own self-titled talk show. Tamron rose to national stardom as an anchor on the Today Show, but before that, she spent 10 years of her career right here in Chicago. We caught up with her to talk food, family, and how she plans to connect with her new audience. 
Tamron Hall, welcome back to Chicago. Thank you, Brandon. We're here at Politan Row. It's a new food hall here in the West Loop. Yeah. I mean, you could probably come here anytime and meet somebody new. I love it. I got to know, what's something that when you come back to Chicago, you just have to jump into? I'm it? such a classic person. I love Giordano's pizza. My secret is Harold's chicken with champagne. I, is hmm. it, I know. It's I that, haven't heard of that combination. It's my combo. You spent 10 years here in Chicago. What did you learn during your time here? I learned resilience. You learn a way to embrace whatever's in front of you. The city is beautiful. I really believe some of the most special friendships and the most special bonds I have to this day were made with people in Chicago. But then you have to make that jump to national. And I just want to read a little of this statement from... What was that feeling for you? It was one with mixed emotions. I'd spent 10 years here. I just bought a house on <laughs> Belmont and Lakeshore. You know, I'm like, I can look at the lake. I finally made it. <laughs> it was one of the hardest decisions that I could make in my career. My friends here, my colleagues, colleagues, they, they were very encouraging. Like, you gotta try it. Chicago will always welcome you no matter what. Mm -hmm. And in this version, I'm coming back with a talk show, yeah. but I knew I could come back and still be a Chicagoan, if I get a Texican. I think someone <laughs> would tell me that one. <laughs> You're a new mom. Yeah. How's that going for you? It's a work in progress. You'd have to ask Moses how well I'm doing, but he's doing great. It's the hardest on-the-job training that I've ever had in my life. I wasn't expecting it, but you know what? I'm doing the best I can. And with all these new changes and these new blessings in your life, how do you manage that? How do you handle that? God. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. My mom, my family, my husband, my team. That's beautiful. Want to head over to the bar? Is it time to It's drink? time. It's time. It's noon somewhere. <laughs> You know, I always tell kids that I mentor that if they have a dream, they need to visualize it in their mind, set the vision. Yeah. Is this something that little girl in Texas visualized for her life? I know that when I moved here at 27, fear was never in my mind. I was ready to take challenges and take on things. And as you get older, you start thinking, okay, I got to save money. I have family. I've got to be more cautious. And I think that's the one thing I want to avoid. You can be responsible. But live fearlessly. And that's what I would tell Tamron, age 7, age 10, age 27. I am Tamron Hall. I was a reporter, then anchor for 25 years. With daytime TV, we have a chance to let you know that someone in Illinois is going through the same thing as somebody in Alabama. They're the same. Have you always wanted to do your own show like this? I wouldn't say that I wanted my own talk show, mm. but I love interaction with people. I knew I wanted to do a show with an audience, something that brought in all of the versions of my career. I realized, Brandon, that people really did know me from different things. I'd see people and they'd say, oh my God, I love Deadline Crime, or did you really eat that squirrel when you were out <laughs> with Bear Girls? So you they ate knew a squirrel. Me. Wait, wait, wait. You, ate, you can't just skip over that. You what? ate a squirrel? You need to Google me, Brandon. <laughs> so we got Harold's with champagne, uh -huh. and we got squirrel. Because I got range. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Clearly. kidding, but no, I, I knew that people had attached themselves to different parts of my career, and I was so grateful for that. Yeah, I left the Today Show, it's almost three years, and when I left that day, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I, I wasn't sure if I would even return to television. And I remember telling my mom, I won't go back to TV unless I can make people proud. When I say people, it's the, like I said, the folks that I met in Chicago, all of the people root for you. This show is that. I mean, with the team and what we plan to do starting September 9th and what will air on WCIU, you know, right, I, right. I want people to look at that show and see a part of themselves. I want it to be an unexpected connection. You're coming into our community. You're coming into our house, so let's talk about it. I feel like you subscribe to the same view I do with TV, that TV has the power to change lives. 100%. How does, that, how does this new show embody that? Listen, I think by showing people the stories that are real, it's a powerful medium, and it can be used to divide or it can be used to join us together. We can still talk about things, and we can still show people you're not alone. Have you thought what that first day is going to be like yet? Oh, gosh, it makes me... Um, so grateful. I don't know what it's going to be like. I'm going to have fun. You know, people have said to me, oh, wow, you know, this show failed, that show failed, blah, blah, blah. You know, okay. And I say to them, it's likely the job you have right now, someone failed at that job, mm -hmm. but you still put in your application. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting in my application with the people, and I hope they, <laughs> they hire me. <laughs> <laughs> premieres September 9th at 4 p.m. on CW26.
You can also see myself, Felicia, and Brandon on The Jam weekday mornings from 6 to 8 a.m. on CW26. It's been so much fun hearing from all the stars and getting previews of all the action-packed TV airing on Chicago's new home for the CW, CW26. There are so many great shows coming to CW26 this fall. Gotta ask, which one are you most excited for, Felicia? John, you know, Batwoman. I could not agree more. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to stay connected with us. Check out CW26Chicago.com. Follow us on social at CW26 Chicago and keep watching CW26. Thanks for watching.